Buoys, day beacons, and lights are becoming far more sophisticated. In fact, the future of aids to navigation are markers enabled with AIS. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll talk to you about what you need to know about coming changes to aids to navigation, and why you should be thinking about AIS for your boat if you don't already have it. First, though, are you looking to refinish your boat's teak with a minimum of mess and fuss? Look no further. Teak Guard's non-toxic water-based formulas for cleaning and finish will turn your teak from dingy to sparkling in no time. It's what I've used aboard Barefoot Gal and absolutely love it. Use coupon code BG20 for 15% off your order of $50 or more. Visit teakguard.com and admire your teak with less maintenance. Okay, let's talk about the future of aids to navigation and how it intersects with AIS. I want to start with a little bit about the terminology. There are a couple of things to know. There's the Coast Guard and there's the International Maritime Organization. And then there's Communications authorities, including the FCC and the ITU, now they sort of all fit together on figuring out how this all works. Okay, the first thing to know is that real aids to navigation are physical items only. In other words, if you look out on the water, you're going to see a buoy, a day mark, or another aid, right where your electronic or paper chart says there's going to be one. The second type are synthetic aids to navigation. They're a real mark, like a buoy or a day mark, or other things, but they also show up as an AIS target. These have a lot of advantages to boaters as well as ships. You can get all the closest point of approach and time to the closest point of approach that you would get with, a, with looking at a mark, say, on radar, without having to spend any time setting them up as targets. And there's the third thing is that a virtual aid to navigation, virtual, it has no physical existence. It only exists as an AIS target. You look out on the water and you won't see a thing. You will only see it on your electronics. Okay, so why in the world do we want the AIS enabled aids to navigation? Well, number one is they improve safety. You can see them on electronic charts long before you can see them with binoculars. You can see them in poor weather also. Secondly, authorities can update their locations much more quickly. There's certain places where channels move with every major storm. Barnegat Inlet in New Jersey is one of them. It takes a few days to physically act, move the marks for the Coast Guard. But the Coast Guard can update synthetic or virtual marks with a push of a button as soon as they've surveyed the new channel. AIS markers will be updated far, far sooner than the real buoys are moved. And the AIS aids to navigation are budget friendly, particularly for deep water marks like safe water buoys. Deep water buoys are hideously expensive to maintain, and the Coast Guard is now switching almost all of them to synthetic or we actually to virtual. They've, they've made them synthetic for the time being. And then as they need to be replaced, instead of replacing them, they're making them into virtual only. Now, let's talk a little bit about how all of these go together and what you should be seeing and what you should be thinking. Let's consider a scenario in which superficially something looks wrong. You look at your chart and you know where a buoy should be. It's not there. You see it at some distance at an angle from where you expect it. Your chart plotter shows an AIS target for the mark in a third location. Well, which one is really the one you should be going by? Okay, we know that charts, even updated from local notices to mariners, are often out of date. So the chart position is going to be suspect. And buoys can drag in heavy weather, heavy weather might even become adrift. So the position where you're seeing the physical aid to navigation is also somewhat suspect. While there's always the possibility that an AIS location could be entered wrong, it's very likely that it won't be caught. So the AIS aid to navigation is almost always 
the most reliable. And that is what you should go by when you're having a problem figuring out which one to follow. Go by the AIS ones. Also, the AIS aids to navigation will identify themselves to you on the chart so that you're not going to confuse one for another. Even if it doesn't match the charted position, it'll say what it is. Okay, number one thing that you have to do to take advantage of these is that you have to have an AIS receiver on board your boat. And if you want to see it on your electronics charts, you have to have that AIS receiver if it's on something like a um, VHF that's AIS enabled. Well, you've also got to have that wired in to your chart plotter or if you're using something like um, Aquamaps on an iPad, you need to have it with um, a Wi-Fi transmission. Things are changing pretty constantly on all of this. And if you find that your own electronics are not showing the AIS, and yet you know that you've got AIS for boats and so forth showing up on it, usually updating the firmware in your AIS will solve the problem. You'll have to look at your own owner's manual to see what exactly you have to do to do that. But in general, Aquamaps works on iOS, Digital Yachts products work, Vesper products work, some Navico work, which is BG, Simrad, Lowrance. Sometimes you need to um, watch out. Some Garmin products work and some are known not to work. And Navionics, again, is another possible, not always. You really need to be thinking if you do not already have AIS, you need to be thinking about that because as more and more places are going to have virtual AIS only, you really want to be able to see that on your charts, electronic charts. So you do want to have that capability. Okay, that's it for this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, where we try to make your boat life better. Please be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode and tell your friends about us. Thanks a lot. Until next week.